Yeah, we, yeah. we don't have to pretend like we know things we don't. Yes. Yeah, and this yes. is basically what most beliefs are. We're, it's yes. just a pretense. But the dangerous part is we forget that we were started out pretending. And then yeah. our <laughs> egos form personalities around it. And, oh, you know, you become, I am a Republican. I am a Muslim. I am a whatever the belief is. And yes. we're not. Yeah. We are human beings, spiritual human beings. Yes. And it's so important to be grounded in right now in yes. this expanding moment because yes. this is where it's all happening. And, and I talk to so many people and I can see the difference if they're, if they're locked into some kind of a belief, whether it's political or national or whatever, they're automatically by definition divided. And yes. in that division, they, yes. they form groups to form yes. like a feeling of strength and power. And yes. then we organize our military around some of these beliefs. Yes. And here we are today where these beliefs that are thousands of years old that date back to actually a family feud between the Arabs and the Israelites, it yes. is threatening to bring our world to a screeching halt. Yes. And I yes. think it's so important to do what you're doing, just getting information out there from other realms, because be truthful with you, most people walking around, they don't have time to do this. They don't have time to read books, write. They have four kids, they're dealing with mortgage payments, the sure. bank, and putting sure. gas in their car. And if you can bring this information down to a everyday level, and yes. make it accessible to people, it yes. triggers little things in their minds. And it, each little mind that gets triggered opens us yes. up to this finer, larger global mind. Yes, I love that. That's a beautiful description. Um, you know, my sense is that from having been a therapist for so many years and having the opportunity to work with people's souls and having the honor to enter that sacred domain, I'm finding more and more people, even what we would call conventional or traditional people, asking these questions like, what's going on here? And wanting, hungry, there's like they're soul hungry. Uh, I don't, I'm not talking about religions, I'm simply talking about the soul or the greater aspect of ourselves and their, uh, their feeling some kind of call at some level, even if they, right. they don't know how to assimilate it. and. The, all the little light centers in the brain are starting to trigger because of this electrical impact of the shift of the ages. This We're moving into a, a highly electrical time and therefore uh, everything's getting stimulated and, um, and people are, wait a minute, what's going on? And so they're living their third dimensional, okay, got the kids, the mortgage, the house, whatever. And at the same time, their souls are calling them and they're, they're kind of in this transition of uh, trying to make sense of this new reality. It's like, uh, I think a lot of people are noticing that normal is leaving, that we're losing normal, and that we don't know where we are. And as the acceleration in the political scene, um, people auguring in with their beliefs, and uh, it's like the last stages of duality. Uh, which my understanding from the Tibetan is that we are leaving the realm of duality as we enter into a new multidimensional consciousness where the entrenchment in a dualistic learning format is now going to be breaking down. So this is like the tail end of this, the extremist dualistic approach to life, us versus them. So tell, like tell me a little bit about the Tibetan. What, what's, how, did, how did that come about? <laughs> Uh, well, about 26 years ago, uh, a, a friend of mine asked me if I wanted to have a, a, a channeled reading. I had never, I didn't even know what channeling was, and I said, sure, and uh, I, I met the Tibetan through another channel, and he's, the first thing he said is, when are you going to let me in? You agreed to channel me, and I'm like, I did. Uh, I was totally shocked. I was not looking for anything like that, uh, and somehow after that hour of sitting with him, I agreed that I would try to open my channel and work with him. And that was 26 years ago, and it's been quite a process of, I'm a conscious channel, I had to learn, I had to clear out blockages in my heart chakra, I had to learn to trust uh, 
work with his energy, uh, acclimate to the voltage. His voltage is much more potent than mine. Uh, and then uh, trust has been the really big process, validation and trust that this is indeed real. It's interesting working with a being on the spirit plane. There's no measurable way to say, okay, boom, 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 this is a real. However, uh, then I started a school. My husband and I started a school. And so many, many, many people sat with a Tibetan. And after all these years, I, I can feel his field of energy. I can feel the presence of him. I could feel how his energy feels running through my body. And then, of course, uh, speaking from that perspective, to people is uh, uh, it's very different from my own perspective so it's been a very accelerated exciting uh, shift in my consciousness to have the honor to work with this ascended master and I've known him for many lifetimes and he's very active now on the earth plane uh, many of the masters are as you said we're getting so much help um, he likes to say that uh, this birthing process that's going on on planet Earth is the main attraction in the universe. And all the forces that be are basically circling around the Earth plane and, and humankind to uh, support us and uh, usher us forward. Uh, we're getting tremendous help because of the critical nature, Not I'm not saying dangerous nature, but the critical nature of such a, a, a powerful, shift in vibratory rate and and the need for humankind to collaborate with the assistance that we're getting and uh, step up and mature and take responsibility and uh, participate at this level and this is just the beginning uh, because as we move into multi-dimensional consciousness interaction with the spirit plane and ascended masters and extraterrestrial friends and all kinds of beings it's going to be very very natural we won't feel like we have to be insulated as if we're the only beings in the whole universe. Yeah, and, and I think a, a lot of what you're talking about is, is probably a natural course of events. You know, it's yes. probably like a planetary awakening. I mean, yes. Pierre de, Pierre de Chardin talks about this. He calls it the new sphere where humanity will connect like a biosphere around the planet and the planet itself will awaken but yes. I, I think we're at this critical junction where our technology has outrun our spiritual consciousness. Uh, and that's, that's a dangerous place right there. It yeah. And so it's, it's up to a lot of us to, I, I, I like one of the sayings that come out of the Middle East, believe in Allah, but tie up your camel first. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, and yeah. it's a balance. We, we need to do everything that you're talking about, you know, like, really concentrate and focus on opening up and manifesting a new world and at the same time keep an eye on our government the military and everything yep. that's going on and, yes. and this is the reality of the situation because I I, I meet so many spiritual people yep. that think that they can just meditate and own this away and it, <laughs> it doesn't work that easy we, we, uh, we need to pay attention and become a, a I guess you would call it spiritual activism. Yeah. You know, we need to be active in all planes of existence right now and take responsibility. Absolutely. And that, that's another thing I liked about your book because it actually looks at some of the problems that we have today and, yes. and we need to deal with them. We do, we do. Uh, and it, the, the process of transformation of the blackening, the three stages of transformation of turning lead into gold, uh, the blackening stage, the negrado stage, the whitening stage, the, uh, I just eludes me right now, uh, uh, the albedo stage and the gold, which is the rubedo stage. Uh, we're in the blackening stage. Everything, in order to really shift, there's this process of disintegration and decay and breaking down. And as we look at our world, we see all the systems, the political system, the education of the health system, the financial system, all of it, it's just the environment, it's all just black, you know, it's breaking down. Uh, and uh, the more that we can uh, be conscious that this is part of transformation and that, we, that we're called to touch into all the places 
that need to be broken down and be fully conscious of that so we can work with it uh, so that then we go into the albedo the white where we're uh, cleansing and purifying and releasing like shedding everything and then we end up in the gold and the gold I think my understanding is the spiritual renaissance that is available to us uh, the Tibetan talks a lot about uh